Well, welcome to another edition of the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we're going to be talking about credit scores, how you get one and what they mean. My guest today is Francine Myers from Allen Marshall and Associates, a licensed insolvency trustee in Nova Scotia, Halifax, and Truro offices as well. Francine, thanks for being here. Hey, great to be here, Wayne. I, I'm excited that you're excited to talk about credit scores. <laughs> I am. I really am. I was like, wow, this is going to be a, a short podcast. You said there's so much to know when it comes to credit scores. So why don't we start off with what is a credit score in case somebody hasn't seen the commercials? Yeah, you know what? A lot of people get credit scores all mixed up with credit reports. So you hear this number and you don't know what what it actually means. So let's talk about what it is. So a credit score is a three digit number somewhere between 300 and 900 that a lender or creditor means the same thing. We used to estimate the probability or the chances that you're actually going to pay back their debt, right? So it's what they look at to try and figure out if you're a good credit risk. And they look a lot of your different behaviors related to your credit and your credit history. And those behaviors are all on your credit report, right? Okay. Now, you didn't ask to have a credit report created, okay? This happened the first day you got a credit card. Okay. And the creditor reported to either Equifax, which is one of the credit reporting agencies in Canada, which you may have heard of, or TransUnion, who is the other credit reporting agency in Canada. Uh, They both do the same thing. Equifax was more popular for a long time than TransUnion came along, but they're pretty much equally based right now. Now, sometimes you look at Equifax and you'll see some of your debts, but you won't see all of them. Then you'd have to go to TransUnion because not all creditors report to both. So that's an important point to remember when you're looking at your credit score. That's why you might see some differences between your credit scores with TransUnion or Equifax. Okay, but am I the weird one because I've never gone on either of those sites to look at my credit score? No, (laughs) but you should. Okay, Right. why? Because, and this seems like a kind of a high number to me, but it's happened to me where I found mistakes, right? Probably about 80% of credit reports contain errors. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's good. To know. That can be anything from them having a wrong previous address on you to them having wrong debt on you, especially is your, if your name is common to somebody else's name, a fairly common name like Jane Smith or Robert Smith, and you're not using your social insurance number to check things, right? Because then they can't check by that number. And then sometimes you'll find things that are on there wrong. So you really should check your credit score to make sure that it is correct. Okay. Now, is it free for me to go check it? It It is and it isn't, all right? Equifax and TransUnion, who are the original credit reporting agencies, right? They will charge you if you go directly to their websites. Now, the good thing is the banks, most of the banks will allow you through your online banking to check your credit score through whatever they use, whichever one they use, their client, they got to use Equifax or TransUnion. Or there's also two websites. Uh, One is called Credit Karma, and they pull data from TransUnion. The other one is called BorrowWell. They pull data from Equifax. And I don't want to sound like an infomercial for either one of them. Because what they do is, yes, they will allow you to look at your credit score and your credit report, right? But sometimes they're not quite up to date. So it may be a little bit of old information that you're seeing. And also, they then have your information and they can market to you through data mining. So Mm. keep in mind, nothing in life is free. They are very convenient to take a look at. But you're going to pay for it in the end because they're going to start marketing to you. So, based on your information. so I'm assuming from what you're saying, the best way for me to go about doing this then is to go maybe through my online banking. 
If you can, yes, not all the banks, the major banks do. Uh, I don't believe the credit unions do, and I don't think all, all the banks do, but I know Scotiabank does, Royal Bank does. Uh, I've seen those because I've helped a lot of my, you know, my own uh, debtors or clients who come to see me show them how they can check their credit reports through them. Okay. And so obviously it's important to have a great credit score. Why? Well, it's important because not just, which is the obvious, well, you're going to get a better interest rate and or even credit at all. It's also important because guess who else is looking at those credit scores these days? Employers. Really? Insurance companies. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, insurance companies and your rate sometimes that you get from your insurance company will be based on your credit score. And they've asked me that when they've said, hey, do you mind if we do a quick uh, credit check? We can improve you, give you a better rate. So that's yeah. what they're doing is they're checking my credit score through either yeah. of those. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I mean, I even got, uh, I recently uh, traded in a car, spoke with my insurance company, got one off my uh, policy, put another one on, and then three days later got a letter saying, oh, by the way, uh, you had already given us permission and we checked your credit score at the same time to make sure uh, that everything was okay. And I reminded me again how important it is to keep track of your credit score and make sure your credit report is correct. Hmm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm learning a ton here about credit. I had no idea. I just thought this was something that I've seen it on commercials. And, and when you're mentioning these other, you know, Credit Karma and the other one, it's like, I didn't know those were real in a way. I, I just thought, well, I've seen the commercials, but are they the ones? Because I'm always leery about where I should be putting my information, especially when it comes to my credit. Yeah. And that's the thing with, you know, Credit Karma or Borrow Well. They're not, they don't market as well. So most people have heard of Credit Karma. They do take your information and they do what they call, you know, data mining. Right. And they will market to you. For instance, you know, if you have uh, an account with Credit Karma, yes, you can go in anytime and check, you know, check your TransUnion. Now, keep in mind, it's not, you know, 100% up to date. They're accurate, but they're not 100% up to date. Uh, but they will uh, then send you uh, an email. Mm -hmm. Here's the offer from one of our partners. Yeah, right? great. So to me, you know, you have to balance the convenience with the invasion of privacy, which is what we're doing today with a lot of things anyway. Yeah, you're right. More more than people yeah. actually realize. So here I am for the very first time going to go find out what the heck my credit score is. What is a number that I should be expecting? What would be a good score and what should make me start to tremble? Gosh. You know, I would be happy if I were checking my credit score for the first time and I had something over 750. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, 650 and above is usually seen as a, a good credit score. Right. If you're looking at 750 and above, that's an excellent credit score. Okay. And all of a sudden I look and I'm 473. Uh, that should make you tremble. Okay, because and but it they've been tracking this right since I you said I got my first credit card. They've literally. You know what, Wayne? If you're looking at your credit score and you're surprised at four seventy five, you should know if your credit score is going to be that low. Like you should have <laughs> some kind of indication. And what would those if indicators be? That's a be? big, scary surprise. There's something wrong on your credit report. Oh, okay. Yeah, good to know. I, I'm not that I'm checking. I'm just saying. If, so can you yeah. change? Can you change your credit score? How do you go about doing that? Do I have to go get more credit? No, not necessarily, you know, but you make a good point, which almost sounds counterintuitive, getting more credit, right? Right. Yeah. So here's the thing. Keep in mind, what do credit scores measure? They measure how good you are at paying off credit based on your past history, mm -hmm. and they try to estimate your future behavior. Right, which is a bit of a, you know, crystal ball yeah. exercise, for lack of a better word. Right. So they look at what you did to see what you're going to do. All right. So 
How to start to increase that is to start to work at your new credit. So number one, if you haven't been paying your bills on time, so let's just say you've got problems right now, right? And you haven't been paying bills on time. Well, you know what? Start paying your bills on time. The other thing is maybe you are too highly leveraged, which simply means if you've got a thousand dollar credit card, and even if you're making a minimum payment and you're running it at $900 a month, guess what? Your credit score is going to go down because you can't pay off credit. Mm. Meaning you can't handle anymore. You might be able to handle what you've got, but you can't handle anymore. So your credit score is going to go down because your future indicator of how good you're going to pay it off is starting to get dimmer and dimmer. Okay. That's good to know. So bring it down and pay your bills on time. All right. Now here's another thing, which is kind of interesting. Let's say you have a car loan and you have a mortgage and they are absolutely up to date and there's low interest rates. You have no problem with them, but your score is 700, which makes no sense at all because your bills are all paid on, paid on time and there haven't, hasn't been a problem. So why is my score not 750 or 775? And the answer is because you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle into the credit bureau. You haven't indicated to them how good you are with what we call revolving credit right? Mm -hmm. You've got the installment credit. That's the credit you pay off every month on a fixed payment, like your mortgage. Your mortgage payment is a set amount or your car loan. Your car loan's a set amount, but a credit card changes. It revolves every month. You might have $200 on it this month. You might have $600 on it next month. Same with most lines of credit, right? Yep. So they're called revolving debt. So unless you have some kind of history with the revolving debt, this is where most people kind of fall apart when they should have a higher credit score than they do. They don't have a lot of debt. They may have one very low credit card, but that doesn't tell the credit bureau how good they are with their money. It means they're actually, when you're looking at, you know, you and I are looking at it, they're probably really good with their money, but it doesn't really give them all the picture because of course credit bureau doesn't know you like your mom knows you <laughs> yeah. all they can do is look at numbers right yeah so if you can't show that you can ha handle a little more debt your score is not going to go any higher i'll tell you a really, really quick funny story so i always had one and i use this as an example because i'm speaking to it you know from my own experience one low limit credit card and i was like why is my score not higher not that it was a you know, big deal, but it made me wonder. And one of my colleagues said, get another credit card. Well, that didn't make sense to me, but I got another credit card and my score went way up. What? Really? Yeah. Just by having two yeah. credit cards, your score went yeah. up. So, and I've heard that yeah. credit cards are, are critical to getting your credit score up. That's one of the things that they you know, are. My kids and I got. never really knew that until I started looking to it. And it made no sense to me at all because it seemed to me if I had a little bit of credit, you know, hardly any, yeah. then that would make me a good risk. But it didn't because it didn't show that I could handle it. It showed that I could handle a little bit of credit, but not a moderate amount of credit. So it's a happy medium, Wayne, between the two. Mm -hmm. So should you right? use your credit card regularly? You know, think that even really makes a difference really it's just a matter of having it eh okay yeah i and and keeping the balance under 30 percent of the limit oh. is the big thing and, and people say that well they like it when you um <laughs> use your credit card and then just make a minimum payment and i'm like well who's they <laughs> yeah and i think they are the lenders yeah. Who are making money off you. It's not the credit reporting people who yeah. like it, right? Good. It's the people who are making money off you. Here's another thing, Wayne, which I found out the hard way myself, which isn't written down anywhere. Okay. So it says pay your bills every month. Okay, that makes sense. What it doesn't say is make sure you pay your bill 
before the lender reports to the credit bureau. Uh, explain that. Why would that matter? So here we go. Here's a good explanation. Let's say you've got, well, today's the 29th of no November, okay? Let's say you have a bill due December 4th. You're going to pay it December 3rd. $1,000 yeah. credit card, you've got $700 on there. You're going to pay that puppy off in full on the 3rd. Sounds good, right? Yes. Okay. In the meantime, ABC Bank has reported on December 1st. Really? And what did they report? They reported you were at 70% of your credit limit. Uh, that doesn't even seem fair. Which means your credit score will now start to go down. Wow, that's unbelievable. Oh. So watch it, and sometimes as much as like 40, 50 points. So it's watch. okay. That, okay, perfect. Wow. Yeah. I'm shocked. Just I have no watch idea. Watch when they report yeah. because they don't know you're going to make, they don't know that your payments do the sixth. They don't know you're going to make the payment the fourth. All they know is when they got the information, yeah. you were at 70% of your limit. But you're saying to watch. Who? How do I watch? Know when they report. When you look at your credit bureau, at your credit report, it will say last reported. Oh, Right? Yep. You'll look at that date. Sometimes they report every 30 days. Sometimes they report every 60. Sometimes they report every 90. That's kind of typical, between mm. 30 and 90 days. But they typically report on the same day within the cycle. Okay, that's perfect to know. What about this situation? People with good credit scores who get turned down by the bank. What's that all about? Well, here's what happens, okay? Our credit score is only one thing the banks look at, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you are still at, let's say, you know, under 30, you're doing everything right. You're making your payments, you're under 30%, right? But you have other debts or monthly bills that don't log into the credit bureau. Because keep in mind, usually um, power bills, um, cell phones, uh, you know, things, water bills, they don't usually get reported to the credit bureau. Oh, okay. <laughs> they don't tell them you're doing well. They only tell them you're doing <laughs> Okay. Right? So you're only going to find that there if you missed the bill. And then mm -hmm. bing, all of a sudden it shows up on your credit report, which is really frustrating. <laughs> but they don't, they don't give you a pat on the back if you're doing well, hmm. right? Yep. So the bank will look at that and say, oh, well, you've got this bill, you've got this bill, you've got this bill, and hmm, we're considering you for a car loan, but guess what? You're paying too much on your mortgage. Oh, I know you want to pay it down quicker, and that's admirable, but you, we don't think you're going to have enough money to service our debt. So you could have a really good credit score. You could be diligently paying your, your bills, living frugally, but because you may have one debt that's a little higher than what fits into their parameters, yep. you're going to be turned down. The other thing is, are you self-employed? Mm -hmm. Well, banks have a bit of an issue with someone who's self-employed as compared to somebody who's a mere T4 mortal, like most of us, right? They like it when you have a steady paycheck. Let's say you've been jumping from job to job. Yeah, you know, that's not really dependable. You're no. not going to be able to pay our debts back. So there's a lot more that the bank looks at besides a credit score. Wow, Francine, I can't believe all the information regarding credit scores. I've learned a tremendous amount. Uh, wrapping things up, what more do I need to know? Is there anything else you need to share with us? Credit scores come and go, okay? If your credit score starts to go down, check your credit report. There could be something wrong on there, right? Number two, don't panic. Don't panic. Credit scores are just numbers.